No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of the heart, produces good, and the evil person, out of evil treasure, produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me, Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. The Gospel of the Lord. No one told me that I had to follow Alice Carlson and Will Terrell. <laughs> but I suppose I'll do this anyway. It's hard to preach on our more legendary saints. It's hard to know which parts of their stories are purely myth and which parts are not. Alfred, the great, is no exception. It's even harder to preach on a saint who is not named something like Luke, Andrew, or Thomas. It's easier to explain apostles and evangelists. We know them through scripture that is sacred and inspired. But Alfred doesn't have scripture. He has a Netflix series. <laughs> that doesn't quite cut it. Honestly, I get uncomfortable preparing to preach on saints like Alfred. I was once outside this tradition, and I thought, those people let their worship of saints get in the way of their worship of God. Nowadays, I know that's not true. My faith has indeed been enriched by a tradition filled with saints. But somebody like Alfred, really? He was the king for crying out loud. How very Anglican it is to remember a monarch <laughs> who revived the arts and promoted education. But didn't Jesus come for the poor? <laughs> Wasn't he born in a barn? And didn't he ride on a donkey and not a dazzling white horse? And wasn't he constantly telling his disciples, I'm not that kind of king. And this isn't that type of kingdom. You see, there, there is no hierarchy in heaven. So why celebrate a king? The God I worship casts down the mighty from their throne and lifts up the lowly, the God I pray to, fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty. The God of my ancestors challenges my assumptions. What was dead is alive. What was old is new. What had fallen away has been restored. 
So why not remember the innkeeper? Or the little drummer boy? Or some third century goat herd whose life did not have any meaning until he heard the story of Jesus? Those kind of folks exist too, right? So why celebrate a king? Don't get me wrong, there's plenty to admire about Alfred. I have no doubt that if Jeremy Carlson met Alfred, he'd say, man, what a really good dude. <laughs> King Alfred kept his people safe. He promoted and educated clergy. He founded monastic communities and saw to it that theological classics were translated into English. The Book of Wisdom, as Alice so beautifully read, tells us that a king who listens to the Lord will profit and be the stability of the people. By all accounts, friends, Alfred was a devoted, Jesus-loving churchman. Jesus tells us that only good trees bear good fruit. Alfred certainly fits the bill. And that's why we remember him. But perhaps Alfred is just history's low-hanging good fruit. There were others, soldiers, footmen, cooks, dishwashers, teachers, postal workers, custodians, bus drivers, weren't there? Aren't there? That's why it's important to remember that we don't come tonight to celebrate King Alfred. We come to celebrate God. We're not glorifying Alfred. We're commemorating what Alfred did to glorify God and what we all do to glorify God. We hear about Alfred not because he was a king, but because he's a good example of life in Christ. His good works were inspired by his faith in God. He bore good fruit because he treasured God in his heart. He built his house on a solid foundation of rock because he listened to Jesus. So tonight, for good reason, we've got Alfred. But don't look to Alfred to see God. Look at Alfred's example to see yourself, not as a king, but as a person who seeks to do the will of God. I saw a church sign the other day. It said, there are no saints in church, only forgiven sinners. And I thought to myself, well, what do they think saints are? Alfred was one of God's own, a sinner like you, and a sinner like me. And a sinner just like those goat herds, innkeepers, cooks, footmen, and dishwashers. Just like the teachers and the postal workers and the custodians and the bus drivers. 
But the thing is, any of them can show you how to glorify God. There is no hierarchy in heaven. There is a former president who builds houses for people who need them most. And there is also an old sunburnt mailman living pension check to pension check and still tithing 10% to the church every month. There is a university president who gives a third of her income to student scholarships. And there is a custodian who volunteers to sit up all night at the homeless shelter. There is a billionaire CEO who leaves all his money to charity, and there is a destitute desk clerk who leaves all of his money to charity. There is a movie star who advocates against human trafficking, and there is a gardener who works overtime just to be able to feed his kids. There is a professional athlete who coaches the Special Olympics, and there is a single mom who coaches inner-city youth. There is a high-powered attorney who does pro bono work for illegal immigrants, and there is a public defender who stands up for even the most heinous offenders. And the same God, the same God who defies our expectations who says that the last shall be first and the first shall be last, the same God who scatters the proud in their conceit, the same God who brought again Jesus Christ from the dead, that same God is telling us that we can learn from any of them, even a king.